Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Gagan and I'm a fourth year medical student. Uh, and in this video, we'll continue our pathology section. Our next topic for this video will be inflammation. Uh, as we all know that inflammation is of two types, acute and chronic. But in this video, I'll be discussing only acute inflammation and in the next video, I'll be discussing chronic inflammation. Uh, because it will be much simpler for you to understand in one video and it will be of very less time so you'll not get bored so let's start let's start with uh, acute inflammation now what is acute inflammation uh, acute inflammation is the immediate response to any injury to the tissue and the basic character of acute inflammation is the presence of edema and neutrophils in the tissue and acute inflammation is mediated by several factors which we will discuss one by one now first one is TLC which is tall like receptors these receptors are present on the macrophages and these receptors detect the pathogens not actually pathogens but the patterns of the pathogen I'll give you an example example is like CD14. CD14 is considered as TLR, tall like receptor, and it is present on macrophage. It then recognizes the lipopolysaccharide which is present, which is present on gram negative bacteria. When it recognizes the uh, lipopolysaccharide, which is the pathogen, which is the property of a pathogen, not exactly pathogen, but the property of pathogen it then activates acute inflammation okay so our next uh, factor will be arachidonic acid which is released by phospholipase A2 now this factor is very important and I need you to remember all of it because it will be very helpful for you in the pharmacology section so arachidonic acid works by two pathways first is COX, which is called cyclooxygenase, and second is LOX, lipooxygenase. This COX enzyme produces prostaglandins, particularly PGI2, PGD2, and PGE2. These prostaglandins result in vasodilation. Vasodilation is a dilation of the blood vessels. So when the blood vessels are dilated, it will increase the vascular permeability. Vascular permeability is uh, when the vessel wall allows the things like, allows the small molecules like drugs, nutrients, ions or uh, lymphocytes to enter into the blood vessel. So it will cause increased vascular permeability when all of the things are inside, go, are allowed to go inside the vessel it will cause inflammation and as compared to COX uh, LOX enzyme LOX enzyme produces leukotrins we often get confused between COX and LOX COX enzyme produces prostaglandins and LOX enzyme produces leukotrins to be specific LTB4 LTC4 LTD4 and LTE4 these leukotrains causes vasoconstriction as opposed to vasodilation by COX enzyme. This vasoconstriction results in bronchospasm because the muscles of the bronchio bronchioles are contracted so it will cause bronchospasm. So when the, when the blood vessel is contracted that is narrowed down so the overproduction of leukotrains will be accumulated inside it and it will cause inflammation. So the next factor that mediates acute inflammation is mast cells. 
So mast cells, first of all we'll see how the mast cells are activated. Mast cells are activated by the tissue trauma or by the activation of complement proteins. We'll study about complement proteins in the next videos. So you just need to remember some facts that I'll give about complement proteins right now. But in later in another videos, we'll discuss about complement proteins. So what is the what is the mechanism of mast cells? Mast cells, when they're activated or when there is tissue trauma, the mast cells will be activated and it will then produce histamine. Histamine will lead to vasodilation and as we have discussed when the vas when the vessels are dilated it will it will allow all the other small molecules to come inside like drugs nutrients um, ions or lymphocytes or other cells so it will cause increase vascular permeability and therefore it will result in acute inflammation. Now the only thing that you need to know about complement proteins right now is that two of the complement proteins which are called C3A and C5A it activates the mast cell production. We'll discuss in more details about complement proteins in the next videos. The next factor that mediates acute inflammation is Hageman factor. This factor is produced by liver and activated by subendothelial cells and tissue collagen. So what is the mechanism of Hageman factor? It activates three types of systems. First is coagulation system, second is complement system and third is kinin system. For the first two systems we'll discuss in next videos but here in acute inflammation kinin system is more important this system, uh, in this system, high molecular weight kinin is cleaved to form bradykinin. And you should learn it that bradykinin results in vasodilation and thus inflammation. And a very important factor here is that bradykinin also mediates pain. Another factor that we have already discussed that mediates pain is prostaglandin E2 which is produced by Cox enzyme. So uh, this was all about the factors which mediate acute inflammation. Now we'll discuss the general symptoms of acute inflammation. So the symptoms are redness which is called rubor OR and uh, it is due to vasodilation. It is obvious and second is swelling because I told you about uh, after vasodilation there will be increased vascular permeability so everything is allowed to go inside the blood vessels so it will cause swelling or inflammation third is pain it is mediated by bradykinin, we just discussed, it is mediated by bradykinin and prostaglandin E2, specifically only E2. Then last one is fever. Now how is fever caused? Uh, as we discussed, arachidonic acid acts by Cox and Lox factors, but here fever for fever Cox enzyme is responsible, Cox produces PGE2 and as it is as it mediates pain it also mediates the temperature so prostaglandin E2 also increases the temperature which will result in fever so this was all about acute inflammation we discussed that um, the main characteristic of acute inflammation are edema and neutrophil in the tissues we discussed the factors that mediate acute inflammation uh, which are first toll-like receptors, second arachidonic acid which is very important uh, for pharmacology section as well, third is mast cells and fourth is Hageman factor. Then we discussed about the symptoms of acute inflammation and we discussed how these symptoms occur. So this was all for acute inflammation. 
uh, I'll be making next video on chronic inflammation. Please check that out. Thank you for watching this video. Keep subscribing and keep motivating.